Now, here is a review of the simple steps for inserting the Cook Medical Back Repostpartum Balloon in the event of PPH following vaginal or cesarean delivery. First, ensure that the uterus is free of placental fragments and assess uterine volume by direct or ultrasound examination. For transvaginal placement following vaginal delivery, insert the balloon portion of the catheter into the uterus under ultrasound guidance making sure the entire portion of the balloon is inserted past the cervical canal and internal os. If not already in place, a Foley catheter should be inserted to collect and monitor urine output. The recommended maximum inflation capacity of the balloon is 500 cc of sterile fluid. It's recommended that the desired volume of sterile fluid be pre-measured into a separate container, rather than relying on a syringe count during the procedure. Using the provided 60 cc lure lock syringe, begin filling the balloon with sterile fluid to the predetermined volume through the stopcock. To maximize the effects of tamponade, most notably to the lower uterine segment, apply gentle traction to the shaft of the balloon to ensure contact between the balloon and the uterine wall. This can be achieved by securing the balloon shaft to the patient's leg or attaching a weight no more than 500 grams. Packing the vaginal canal with iodine-soaked or antibiotic-soaked vaginal gauze applies counterpressure to help stabilize the balloon in its proper position. Connect the drainage port of the device to a fluid collection bag and closely monitor any ongoing bleeding. Also, watch patients' vital signs, as well as pallor, cramping, and urinary output. To adequately monitor hemostasis, the balloon drainage port and tubing should be flushed with sterile fluid to clear any clots that may be occluding the drainage ports. If the balloon dislodges through the cervix at any point, deflate, reposition, and reinflate with sterile fluid. Remember, the maximum indwell time for the balloon is 24 hours. If the patient continues to deteriorate or if vital signs are not improving, then more aggressive treatments should be pursued immediately. Once hemostasis is achieved, the Bacri postpartum balloon can be easily deflated and removed. Remove any traction and vaginal packing. Deflate the balloon using the syringe and stopcock assembly. Gently retract the balloon from the uterus and vagina and discard. Continue to monitor the patient for signs of uterine bleeding to ensure stabilization. Here is the transvaginal placement and removal procedure again. Please refer to the instructions for use for full procedural details and contraindications. For transabdominal placement of the Bacri postpartum balloon after a cesarean delivery, many of the same steps are followed. The main difference is how the balloon is inserted. First, ensure that the uterus is free of placental fragments and assess uterine volume by direct or ultrasound examination. Pass the balloon catheter inflation port first through the abdominal incision into the uterus and through the cervix. This technique allows the balloon to be situated in the uterus without potential contamination of the peritoneal cavity with vaginal flora. Have an assistant help guide the catheter through the cervicovaginal canal until the deflated balloon comes in contact with the internal cervical os. The incision can now be closed, being careful not to puncture the balloon. Once the incision is closed, Follow the instructions described previously for post-vaginal delivery. 
including filling the balloon, applying traction and gauze packing, monitoring the patient, flushing the drain, and final removal. Please refer to the instructions for use for full procedural details and contraindications.